When we last left off, the 76ers had just signed Tim Duncan to join Yao Ming and Dwayne Wade, and the 24 second shot clock was finally restored back to normal. We're still in the Elam ending, where fourth quarters don't end until a team reaches the winning team's total after three quarters plus 24 points. In 2004, Steve Nash wins MVP for the Charlotte Hornets, scoring 25 points per game and averaging nine assists per game. I also just want to say that in real life, Steve Nash never averaged over 20 points per game in his entire career. That's not me hating. I'm just, I love Steve Nash. I just had to point this out. 2K is wild in here. But most players have seen a substantial increase in points per game. Iverson went from 19.2 points per game to 32.4 points per game. It's good to see that scoring is back to something pretty normal. And speaking of normal, the NBA standings seem pretty balanced throughout. There aren't teams winning 70 plus games anymore. The Timberwolves dynasty is long gone as the Clippers make easy work of them. They then dispose of Steve Nash and then sweep the Warriors due to finals MVP. Oh, we don't care about that. But what we do care about is that the Charlotte Bobcats are here and they use their fifth pick to trade it away for William Wong in a 2007 first round pick. Dwight Howard joins Chris Bosh on the Utah Jazz. And in the next draft class is Chris Paul. I'm really just glad that the 24 second shot clock is back. The shot clock has been messed with so much already, but it's a wonder why the Elam ending has stuck around since 1987. What also doesn't help is that NBA 2K doesn't calculate the target score for us. So on top of this, I had to do math. I'm sure they'll change it in a future 2K they better. And the odds for them to change the Elam ending have to be in my favor, right? Hey everyone, future Kofi here. He's not right. You see, NBA 2K has many different rule variations that can be added, but can only change five of them per season. Some of these rules actually cancel each other out in some respects as well. Kofi has to accept every rule change, and there are more Elam ending variants than rather getting rid of the Elam ending, so he's being optimistic about nothing. In free agency, the Suns signed Marcus Camby to help LeBron and Amari Sotomayor. Duncan, Yao, and Wade stay together, but the main story of the season is Kevin Garnett winning his fifth MVP with the 64-win Toronto Raptors. LeBron and the Suns defeat the Heat in seven, but manage to lose to the Magic, who beat the Raptors. Holy, what happened here? Coming from the Timberwolves' Magic face-offs in the 90s, it's good to have parity and no sense of just two teams that matter in the NBA. The Clippers make it back to the NBA Finals and get walloped by, let's say it together, the Indiana Pacers. Yep, the Indiana Pacers. We shouldn't be surprised. This is the fourth best team in the league, but I will say that we haven't talked about this franchise at all for this entire simulation. In fact, there are a couple of teams that we just straight up haven't talked about or haven't really been relevant. The Hawks, Warriors, and Bucks have really just been an afterthought for this entire simulation. It's, and it's not like I'm leaving stuff out here that in interesting happened for them. Nothing interesting has happened for them in two and a half videos. Entering the 2005-2006 season, we see something strange. We see a 30-year-old Kobe turn into a 68 overall player. Kobe joins the Celtics to see if he can contribute his patented fadeaway jumpers in a league that now has a normal shot clock. It's unlucky that he was in an era that was trying to actively destroy the shot clock and fun. And I think that his game didn't respond to that well. I'd say this, but his counterparts are thriving. Steve Nash and Allen Iverson are both doing very well for themselves. Why isn't Kobe? Meanwhile, Kevin Garnett is on a tear, winning MVP for the sixth time. It's wild that 2K doesn't have any voter fatigue whatsoever. The Bobcats somehow make the playoffs and signed Allen Iverson? Wait, when did that ha- what? The Jazz have Chris Bosh, Dwight Howard, and Sean Bradley in the front court, so good luck scoring on them pretty much. The Suns are on the rise and the 76ers have a dynamite trio still, but the Raptors retooled with the dynamite duo of Kevin Garnett and Jason Kidd who make it all the way to the finals to face off against the Tracy McGrady Clippers that won in 2004. The Raptors dynamic duo of Kevin Garnett and Jason Kidd trounced the Clippers 
behind 43 points from Jason Kidd in a closeout game. Kevin Garnett wins finals MVP, averaging 33 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, and 2 blocks. Over the offseason, the NBA votes to change the fouling out rule down to 5, which is nuts for an Elam ending NBA. The Nets win the first pick and spend it on Kyle Lowry. Now this sounds like a draft reach until you remember how absolutely awful the 2006 draft class was. LaMarcus Aldridge goes to the Kings and Bargnani goes to the Wizards. But in this draft, what's interesting is that not one, but two teams have back-to-back picks, which is very odd. Vince Carter, Tim Duncan, Mike Bibby, Yao Ming, and Steve Nash are all free agents. Amari Stoudemire stays in Phoenix, Nash goes to Miami, Mike Baby goes to New Orleans, and Tim Duncan joins Allen Iverson and the Charlotte Bobcats. Vince Carter stays on the Knicks. I haven't been home in a while. With each new location and each new pressing time, I'm starting to forget about my own timeline in the fumble dimension. Who's, who's the MVP? Can you tell me who's in this year's NBA Finals? <laughs> LeBron almost averages a 33-point triple-double for the season in addition to 2.7 steals and 2 blocks per game on out-of-this-world shooting splits. The get LeBron James some help narrative rings true, as it's still not enough to propel them over the Sixers. The Sixers then dispose of the Celtics in seven, but then get waxed by Bibby and the Hornets. The Raptors Hornets finals is set up to be an absolute fi- oh, never mind. The Raptors win in six for their third title in five years. LeBron James has turned a corner, becoming a 97 overall player, and comes oh so close to averaging a 32-point triple-double with two and a half steals and almost two blocks per game. There is nothing he can't do on the court. He shot 45.8% and he has no weaknesses. The team, however, does, as they lose in seven in the first round to the Los Angeles Lakers. Hakeem Olajuwon has gone from playing on the court to coaching on it, as the Dallas Mavericks have the number one overall seed. Other notable former player hires are Patrick Ewing as the big man coach for the Wizards, and Larry Bird is now a shot doctor for the 76ers. Magic Johnson is the assistant GM on the Bulls, and Kareem is the assistant GM for the Lakers. Anyway, Hakeem's Mavericks reached the NBA Finals to face the Charlotte Bobcats. Oh shit. In Game 6 with the Mavericks up 3-2 in the series, we come to a horrifying realization. Tim Duncan has fouled out of the game. With the Elam ending on and no other help for Allen Iverson, Carmelo Anthony and a bunch of NPCs win the NBA Finals in 6 games. Elam ending and five fouls being on at the same time is really bad for the fun of the sport. The Denver Nuggets select Russell Westbrook with the first pick, the Bucks select Derrick Rose, and the next draft class is lined up to be something special. Gilbert Arenas joins the Oklahoma City Thunder, and Carmelo follows up on his ring, winning the MVP award on ridiculous shooting splits. The LeBron-led Suns are in the play-in where they lose immediately. The Pistons hold their own against the Raptors, and it's all thanks to Jarrett Jack turning into prime Chris Paul. Is this the year for the Pistons? No! The Celtics of all teams take care of the Pistons to face the Mavericks, who again get to a 3-2 lead in the playoffs. Despite 49 points from Carmelo Anthony, the Celtics win Game 6 and then use that momentum to win Game 7. This loss hurts so much because it should have been the Pistons. Dirk Nowitzki retires at the ripe old age of 32. Just in time for the Elam ending to be over and oh my god, thank goodness. The Timberwolves and Magic have the number one and two picks in the draft respectfully. The Timberwolves select James Harden while the Magic select Steph Curry. It's a wild thing seeing both of these teams so high up in the lottery when they were absolutely stomping on every 90s basketball team known to man. That was basically all of the last video and I truly hope that that doesn't happen again. Tim Duncan and Baron Davis are free agents along with Chris Paul and Kenyon Martin. Rajon Rondo decides to join the Timberwolves to join Harden, Devin Harris, Rudy Gay, and a 37-year-old Shaq. Oh yeah, Shaq's still here. Tim Duncan left the Bobcats and wh where did he go this time? Oh, the Mavericks? 
LeBron wins another MVP award while the Detroit Pistons somehow win 58 games, which is, I can't remember the last time the Pistons were the one seed. I try not to get my hopes up as the Pistons beat the Pacers in seven, and then the Nets in six. Wait a minute, no way. They rely on their exceptional defense to thwart Gilbert Arenas and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And in 2010, the Pistons win their first ever NBA Finals. And for the first time ever, that one random Piston that's in the back of the stage every time is actually on the right stage. All I'm gonna say is as a Pistons fan running the stream, it was a long time coming. In the tournament for the number one pick, Steph Curry's going at it with no crowd and they're all lost some, or something. This is a pretty big game. Oh, there, there they are. The Bulls win number one pick to draft. Oh, wait a moment. It's time to check the rules. I wonder what fun stuff could be happening. Oh no. The salary cap is gone. The mid-level exception is gone too. And so is goaltending? DeMarcus Cousins is drafted by the Grizzlies. Paul George goes to the Bucks and John Wall joins the Magic who already have Steph Curry. The Cavs had two top 10 picks, so they had to pay Derek Favors $192 million and Gordon Hayward $171 million. But seeing what happened when there was no salary cap before, I want to know which teams will benefit from that. LeBron James is no longer on the Suns. Uh-oh. What team did he go to? The Grizzlies? All right. Yao Ming has joined the Orlando Magic, and Vince Carter has joined Kevin Garnett on the Toronto Raptors along with an aging Jason Kidd. And it turns out that LeBron James has joined the Memphis Grizzlies with Mike Bibby. LeBron uses that to win MVP again. The Memphis Grizzlies win 66 games with one of the most stacked lineups I've ever seen. The Grizzlies make it all the way to the semifinals along with the Mavericks, Raptors, and Wizards. It becomes Grizzlies, Raptors, and Garnett and company have no chance against the unfair onslaught of the Grizzlies. LeBron gets his first championship in the league and the league immediately celebrates that by changing the shot clock back to 45 seconds. <sighs> the Bobcats get Kawhi Leonard while the Cavaliers draft Jimmy Butler. So for those of you keeping score out there, the Cavaliers have three top picks that add up to half a billion dollars. Keep in mind that these players are all on rookie deals that may or may not walk in free agency after it's all said and done. Also, the other rosters are way too stacked for the Cavs to even compete, so they're just wasting their time. The real strategy would be to not sign these rookies at all to make space for all these free agents, but what do I know? The free agent reckoning has begun. Steph Curry has come into his own and now he's joined by Dwayne Wade and Zach Randolph. Kevin Garnett comes to Minnesota and the Raptors get Chris Bosh and Dwight Howard. Melo goes to the 76ers. And I forget if that happened last year or the year before. LeBron wins MVP averaging a whopping 11.2 points per game in 48 minutes of play. The new shot clock is destroying everything we hold dear to basketball. Pace, shooting, and scoring is down severely. Wizard fans paid tickets all season to watch Chris Paul lead the league in scoring at an average of 16 points per game. The Grizzlies and Timberwolves finish with 63 wins each as the addition of Garnett proves vital for a run that might just prove to be tougher now that he sprained his ankle. The Memphis Grizzlies power through the semifinals to face the Thunder. Despite the Thunder's best chance to abuse the new goaltending rule, the Grizzlies persist. The game goes into overtime where the Thunder win and the game stops. And here's the point where I forgot that Southern Death Overtime was in effect. The rule was enacted in 2007 before the Elam ending ended, which means that for two seasons this overtime rule existed when there was a time that didn't have overtime. So no wonder I wasn't looking out for it. The Thunder bounce LeBron out of the playoffs and go on to face Kevin Durant and the Chicago Bulls who are on a wild run throughout the playoffs. The games go all the way to seven and we're able to see Kevin Durant and company cook for a championship and give the Chicago Bulls their first ring since 1990. And Kevin Durant hasn't bounced around to other teams. He's been a Chicago Bull his whole career and they love him for it. Allen Iverson retires as Charlotte Bobcat. The 76ers draft Anthony Davis to join Carmelo Anthony. 
Lillard goes to the Clippers and Draymond Green goes to the Bobcats, while Bradley Beal is set to join Kevin Durant in Chicago. And the Pistons get Dion Waiters. Paul George signs with the Orlando Magic and Elton Brand joins the Grizzlies. The Kings exist. Westbrook stays with DeMar DeRozan in Denver. LeBron wins another MVP and the Orlando Magic lead the league in scoring with 62 points per game as a team. The Magic are stacked juggernauts on offense thanks to the great play of Ersan Ilyasova. We get a semifinal of Grizzlies, Timberwolves, Raptors, and Magic, and games are ending in the scores of 50s and 60s. I'm getting sad. In a tough seven game series, the Magic were able to outlast the Raptors who are tough inside. While LeBron and the Grizzlies go down once again, this time to the Timberwolves. So we get Timberwolves magic once again. Oh my God, the NBA's biggest rivalry. What we thought would be a series for the ages we don't get as the Timberwolves stop them easily to get James Harden his first ring. The Hawks sign Giannis, the Nets sign Oladipo, the Clippers sign Shaquille O'Neal. I'm sorry, they signed Shaquille O'Neal Jr. My bad, apologies. LeBron James, Steph Curry, James Harden, Chris Paul, Garnett, and Rondo are all free agents. Where will they go? Chris Paul goes to the Magic. Kyrie joins the Timberwolves in place of Rondo, who joins the Raptors. And John Wall joins the Pacers. How do I continue? You just have to keep going at this rate. You're almost done. But at what cost? I ruined Michael Jordan's career. All right, you're a Pistons fan. Don't pretend to be sad about that. Yeah, you're right about that. But look at everything else. A 45 second shot clock, scoring down the drain, no salary cap, I fear the absolute worst. Hey man, you have to keep going, no matter what. Trust me. Dude, have you seen this series? You know the answer. Who wrote the script? Oh yeah. We did. Wait, you're having trouble remembering all of this? Yeah, I feel myself slipping more into a reality that I don't know. All right, who's the greatest of all time? Hakeem. What's the best dynasty ever? The Timberwolves. Oh no, he's now believing the Sim is the real version of basketball. Have you heard about Bob Sura? Kofi, you have to hurry up and finish the Sim. Please snap out of it. The Pistons really picked Dion Waiters? Oh, I didn't think I was gonna have to do this. John Salmons. Huh? Oh yeah, I just used our universal code word to get you back into reality. I can only do that so many times though. Thank you, I was, I was slipping a bit there. All right, let's finish the simulation. 